God gives us faith, which is the ability to look through like a window. And although I'm surrounded by all this right here, he opens a window that I can see that if you can stand, there is hope for tomorrow. That tomorrow will be better than the day, but you just got to be able to stand to see. So he allows you to see the end from where you are, even though you're nothing else. So it's the ability to look through this narrow window to see that it ain't over unless you throw in the towel. Amen. He says it's blind, boldly, blind faith. So a lot of times you got to blind yourself to people, to conditions, to situations, to see that it ain't over. I'm going to tell the Lord, thank you. Just about this. That's what I want you to do. I want you to look beyond where you are. Not in a good look beyond. Tomorrow's gonna be better. Be prepared to do make some bold decisions to change conditions. I'll say this one other thing, and I move out. I remember uh, some of you early in my uh, evangelism career, uh, I was functioned by the Spirit. Get up, pray.
and all the lights off. I could feel the bright feelings present. I reached over there and cut the lamp off. 47 years old, I got the lamp on, bro. <laughs> Found the Spirit spoke to me, say, anything that's connected to God will never hurt you, will never harm you. I live by that rule. Even though the body can get afraid by them things, anything connected to God will never harm you or hurt you. Don't be afraid to press your way. We let timidity rob us even of our relationship with God because it takes us to the place that we're not comfortable. But if you connect to God, he will not harm you, he will not hurt you. And I said, I received that word. I cut the lamp off for about a minute. I cut it back. I said, I received what you said. But my body, give me a chance to get a gesture. Every time I close my eyes, I can see that the rest are looking at me. I feel like he's still there. So I said, be patient with me. No, God ain't through with me yet. Pow! I just ran back home for you know, it. took me two or three nights. I had to get, you know, get it out of, you know. But, 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 but the, the, I said that to share this morning. God will often to make some bold moves that will change your life. That's what God wants to do. Or God is doing for those who are willing to be that woman. To take where you are at a place of seemingly hopelessness, helplessness, dream, identity, and everything else is like to collapse under a heart attack. But if you're bold enough to say, to look crazy before the world, I'm going to carry this dead thing up and sit it on the medical bed because this thing is the old, something's going to happen. God will change this in there if, you, if you're bold enough to not be called, not mind being called crazy and out of your mind. I'm going to say thank you, Lord. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Let's close. Finally, brothers, be strong in the Lord. Strong here actually means, also, if you look it up, it's, it's bold. It's courageous, but it's being bold, bodacious, having tenacity and will. Be strong. Be bold in the Lord. Look what the, I think I put it in the, uh, in the, in the Passion Version. This, this, I'm almost through now. In the Passion Version, look what he says. How This is how it reads. Now, beloved, my beloved ones, the same script 6 and 10 of Ephesians, but this is the Passion Translation. Now, my beloved ones, I have saved these most important truths for last. See what he's saying? Uh oh, here it is. Here it is. Be supernaturally infused. Without the fusion, the natural be supernaturally infused with strength through your life union with the Lord Jesus. You see what it's saying? Be supernaturally infused. That's how you where you get your boldness from. It ain't just you. Be supernaturally infused with strength through your life union with the Lord Jesus Christ. Stand victoriously with force. Of this power that you have received. Stand with force. Don't be timid. Stand with self assurance. Closing. If you're watching the animal kingdom, when the males are fighting, as long as the hairs are ruffled, their back kind of natural instinctive attribute of when you're very aggressive hands raised on your back the ears stand up tail out you're in an aggressive posture of attack that's a threat when they lay their ears back hair tucked down tail tucked between the air and they bow their head it signals to the other aggressive male I submit your posture is telling the enemy that you submit on, before you even get into war. The enemy is reading a submitted posture because you're timid and afraid. You're saying, I concede to defeat the foe because you don't want to fight. Boldness is, you may even whip me, but we're going to fight. You 
signal to people that you're defeated by your posture. Amen. That's why the white man, we talked to him, slave wanted you to bow your head. Yes, sir. And before they even said anything, they bowed their head, submitted to you. The devil is a lie. Yeah. Or you'd be hung for looking a person directly in the eye. And let me see, he wants you to be in a submitted to me. That you're no threat to me. And even the day, it troubles white when you walk dead up to him and look him in the eye. Because that tells them something about you. And so they really want to do something. They don't look for that person. That stand up in the face and question them. They want that, uh, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You do what you're told. Now, I, I, I ain't mean to go there because I know everybody, but it, it just examples so you can paint the picture. And I'm saying to you, lift your head up. Look the devil in the eye. I don't care who he is. I am not timid. You get victory over me, it ain't because of I'm, I'm weak. You really ain't gonna get victory over me because of stuff I got. At some point, you're gonna tie out. <laughs> Rover dope. <laughs> Muhammad Ali. I can't look at this guy in that because he's twice as big, twice as strong. But I know something. He ain't never gone more than six rounds. I'm gonna build up my stomach muscles and let him wear himself out. And before him, I couldn't hardly lift his folks. His arms up. Seven, eight rounds later, Ali say, okay, now it's my time. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. All I had to do was I'll last you, I'll think you, be innovative and bold enough to fight you. Because I got a plan. A few rounds later, he lands on the ground and I'm standing with my hands up. I wasn't stronger than you, but I was bolder than you. I had dad never in. I let you punch my body and beat it like a bag, but I had a plan. Boldness. I'm going to outlast you. All right. The righteous are bold as lions, Proverbs says. God has given us a spirit of fear and his timidity. How long? Now, my, here's my closing. Dr. King, she went up laid the child on the bed, she made a bold move. Here's my closing statement. What if boldness, this is how I put it, is the birth canal of your blessings? Anything that God has for you is going to come through the canal of boldness. Amen. Lift your hand and tell the Lord thank you. Thank you Lord. That's what I propose to you. What if boldness is the birth canal of your blessings? What if boldness no boldness, you close up the delivery process. What God will for your life can't manifest because the canal is closed. But if the spirit of boldness is there, that's the birth canal of your blessing. The bold of you are. It allows for the free delivery of the will of God. That's what I propose to you. Okay. Get your spiritual or your sensual and your spiritual work in concert this week. The work is one. And then operate in the spirit of boldness. Don't be afraid to be called crazy. Be innovative. Think outside the box. To challenge the status quo. To push the boundary. To go beyond the boundary. Because the truth of the matter is only the strong, the bold, will survive. Clap your hands for the Lord.